Oh, ow. Hi, everyone. Today I'm here with Caesar, who's a, who's a Porsche expert in, in our Northeast <laughs> community. He's done a lot of exhaust installs. And uh, today we're gonna be installing these uh, Sol Sport Cats in my 991.2 uh, Carrera T with a Sport Exhaust. And, uh, and my expert over here is gonna show us how it's done. And by the way, he's got a, he's got a channel on YouTube dedicated to his Porsche, so I'll send yes. a link. Yes, a lot of very, very useful clips and videos and whatnot. So what are we doing first? Well, we're gonna unscrew these uh, 12 millimeter. One, two, three, four. We wanna Nuts. remove the cat from the turbo. And by the way, we're gonna try something different. Usually the procedure is to lower the whole exhaust, but we're gonna attempt to loosen up these clamps here and maybe hammer the cats out to make our lives easier, hopefully. We right? can try, absolutely. Yeah. I'm a little skeptical on yeah. the fitment, but I'm we can the definitely optimist. try it. I'm but the if, optimist. Not, if not, there's only two, uh, two straps holding on the center of the muffler. This exhaust system, you got the center muffler and then you got the cats on the side that connect to the turbo. So we can give that a shot, but uh, worst case scenario, we'll drop the whole muffler down. Some people remove the rear bumper for extra access. It all depends, but you really don't need to remove the rear bumper. The bumper on this car is really just a, kind of like a skin or a cover. There's a lot of equipment underneath it that still kind of hugs the inside with shields and brackets. So I found out the hard way, I really didn't need to take off the bumper when I uh, did a few exhaust installs. The first step should be removing the heat shield. Yeah, the heat shield on that side. This yeah. one is still on, so we're gonna take off the heat shield and then the O2 sensors, and then we'll be able to maybe slide off these stock cats, which are really thick and big. The sole ones, if we're able to do that, I think are a little bit slimmer, so we'll have a yeah. little bit more space, but that'll yeah. be the goal. It's not hard in theory, but there's always some snags and different things that happen along the way. So yeah. we'll give it our best shot as usual. I made a mistake and I said, this was gonna be easy. That's mistake number one. Absolutely a mistake. <laughs> it's gonna be a hard job. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you might wanna remove the rear passenger side wheel to get access to the heat shield screw. Well, so there's one on top of the cat. There's one here, there's one here, and then there's one all the way in the back. He said three hours for this job, let's see. So a quick progress update on the driver's side. I uh, removed all the nuts and backed out all the studs. The last one I'm backing out is here. Now, here's a pro tip to get that O2 sensor out on the driver's side. You get that uh, O2 sensor uh, tool, uh, which I'm gonna link in the description, and then you, you throw a wrench on it. Obviously, you're not gonna have leverage, so what you do is you get one of these extensions or anything longer and basically use it as leverage here. You push it up and check this out. You'll be able to undo it. You'll be able to loosen it up. That's gonna give you enough leverage. You can use a similar process on this one, I believe. Hopefully, hopefully. hopefully. Yeah. All right, finally got the heat shield off. Tommy's been working on the driver's side. It doesn't look like much. So this shield is kind of situated like this if you picture um, a level plane. This one you need to take off the rear wheel to access it safely. This one you can kind of get to. This one's on top and if the cats are still hot, you're gonna to wanna to wear some gloves or just let them cool down. This one you just need a combination of things, but really just a swivel extension so you can kind of go over and in without um, going in at an angle. Okay, so as Caesar over here is undoing whatever it is that he's undoing, I've got my friend over here. Let's see if my method works. My idea is to use brute force to get these things out. It might not work, but it might. <laughs> Let's see. It's moving a little bit, not gonna lie. The only thing is hitting it up top is hard. So we're gonna have to use the original method. And now to undo the middle O2 sensor, what you do is you get your tool in there and you see you use this wrench and then use something longer as leverage and basically just push it like this. I already loosened it up off camera, but basically you do this and that pushes the wrench and that's gonna help you loosen up that stubborn O2 sensor. Uh, and then you can loosen it up by hand. Once you loosen it up by hand, you wanna wrap it in a little tissue. And then uh, you wanna wrap it in a tissue and put it aside. You don't wanna damage it. Let's and now check this happens. out. This is what the O2 sensor looks like. Oh yeah. Yep. yep. Wrap it in a little napkin. Do not touch it with your fingers. You can stuff that and put it aside. Stuff it aside and then the last one is here. Oh, this was Caesar's idea. Uh, yeah, it could work. So it's a swivel. 
swivel head, I guess you can call it. Yeah. But you can see the O2's at an angle and this will put your socket flat so you can work like a human being. On practice, three, two, one. Oh, I am old, that is man. You got it, dude. Uh. Uh. Oh, look how happy he looks. <laughs> uh. Oh man, this is great. I was actually, ah, great. I was dreading it. Oh, we got it, we got it, we got it, it's good. I was dreading. Going back in, it's way easier. I was dreading this. Thing. Everything's easier on the return. Plus, you can get to look at your new exhaust components. While we're up here, uh, we have to remove the exhaust. Uh, you just uh, slide them out, yep. You slide them out, right? It could be a little tight, but you just pull straight up. Dude. Good. Uh. All right. So what, what are we doing? We're going to loosen up now these What I'm going to do is I'm going to get the table and I'm going to lower the car down a little bit. All right. And then we can kind of put it onto a box or a table. Sounds good. Does that seem logical? Let's do it. Such a good guy. Really good guy. So now there are these brackets here. We're going to undo these brackets, which will then allow us to drop the exhaust down. It is not being held on anything except those studs over there. Yeah, it takes a little shimmying. Oh, ow. <laughs> you okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. No, no. I didn't know it was going to come down that hard. I see stars. Yeah, definitely do not do this yourself. You need a helper. Probably not your wife, so call a friend over, <laughs> have some beers ready, because uh, this is actually quite heavy. I mean, we used a Klein box, but if you have something to hold up the, uh, the exhaust when you're going down. The best way to hold up your exhaust is a $3,000 box of Klein headers. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> While the exhaust is out, check this out. Let's take a look at this. So this is your turbo. You see that uh, the wheel? This is the exhaust side wheel. And this is your, with the waste gate that opens up. That's your waste gate actuator that gets opened up. You see how cool is it that you can actually see into it? Very, very cool. You don't want to touch it. You don't want to contaminate it. It's coming off. PB Blaster. Oh yeah. <laughs> so this is your 200 cell. And this is your whatever number of cell it is. Uh, I think it's four, but four. I'm just yeah. guessing. Ready? Yep. There you go, baby. So these are the spark cats. This is the OEM cat. Look at the size difference. Uh, and then that's, yeah, that's really it. Yeah, size kind matters. of ugly looking. It is very ugly looking. And it's a lot lighter than new ones. Not yes. that we care about weight saving. Oh, we Although do. Although Carrera this, T is all about weight saving. This is a Carrera T. Yeah. And I always get on Tommy because it's got a sunroof, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> It was like 10 hits and yeah, we're done. That, was, that, was, that wasn't fair, but that's how, the, that's how the whole job goes. One side goes easy, one side's hard. Yeah. What are we gonna do? Let's muscle it up. Let's there's see. nothing to hold it. No, down. without the, no, just to see how it aligns. Okay. And then we, we can always remove it, or we will always remove it. Okay. Ready? Ah. Corner stud on this side. How are you doing? I'm in. Oh, he's in. Hey, why don't you just, you want to snug it? I think we're good. <laughs> this um, was unexpected. Here, uh, I'm holding it. That's okay. If you can just snug it. I mean, take your time. Well, <laughs> I'm only holding a 70 pound exhaust. <laughs> so just a little progress update. We reattached it on these clamps. We will not forget to reattach uh, the, uh, the vacuum lines. Uh, or one of the things we have to now do is we have to adjust the tips. Uh, as you could see, we want the tips to be centered. And from what I'm seeing, I think we should move it just a little bit this way. To do it, obviously everything slides in here. We figure that it's easier to reattach it here and then basically use one of these. Okay, so as Caesar just tightened the last two clamps, I'm gonna show you people uh, what just happened before we put the heat shields on. So. Uh, new nuts and bolts were used here, obviously with washers. There's a longer nut that goes on top here and then on top on the other side. Uh, this one, uh, the stud on this side, you actually use the original one, so you just remove the, uh, the OEM nut and replace it with this one. Uh, on this side, this is what it looks like. Everything is pointing that way except the inner one, uh, which is here. And then these clamps, you tighten these clamps. Don't forget to reconnect the vacuum hoses. Uh, you, we lined up the tips 
and we're very happy with the alignment. Next, we're gonna reattach the heat shields, but believe it or not, it's gonna be a lot easier because you have a lot more space and you, you're not, you don't have to break anything loose. You're gonna tighten everything, so it's gonna be a lot easier to, uh, to do this. And then uh, we're gonna do the first start. I cannot wait to do the first start. Before we lower the car and start it, how would you rate this, uh, this install? On a scale one to 10 into a difficulty, one to 10. One being the least difficult, 10 being the most difficult. I think it depends uh, if you're handy. Let's say you're like a first timer, I think. Yeah. Like if, if you're not If you're a first timer, you probably can't do it, I feel like. I think it'll take you most of the day if you're a first timer, yeah. but if you're pretty handy, I don't think it's anything unusual. It just, it's tight fitment. It's yeah. not fun, but there's not too many screws. So you said un... three and a half hours and we kind of finished in two and a half. We started at 1, 3.30, so Did we? Not? Okay, so, yeah, yeah. yeah, but we were both working on it. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's the true. last one I did, I was doing most of the work, yeah, so yeah, yeah. I think it helps, especially, yeah, and you yeah. got the heat shield off, too, so. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, those heat shields are that's stubborn. True. We were just fighting with them right now, and they suck, so. Um, yeah. Overall, how would I rate the install? Uh, difficulty would be past a 5, so I would say yeah. maybe even a 6 or a 7. All right, yeah, if, I agree. If 10 is the hardest, but I it's agree. not a hard install, it's just more of a... Some, some parts are frustrating. Yeah. I think if, if, if headers are eight. Okay. Headers, if headers are eight, this is like a six or yeah. like a five and a half. I agree, I agree. Headers are definitely, I would say twice as long, but they could turn into a whole weekend project. Yeah, <laughs> if you don't have the tools. Um, and some people I've seen say headers take only a few hours, like three yeah. hours, but it's unrealistic, no, you know? Yeah. Unrealistic. I would say headers, five and a half hour job. Yeah. This is probably a three, three and a half hour job. Yeah. So yeah, it all. So keep it's all that in those. mind when you're paying these shops ten hours to do this. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's a stretch, yeah. but it looks awesome, and uh, everything's yeah. coming together. Cool. All right, so we're gonna lower it and start it up. You can actually hear the turbo spool. Oh, yeah. You can hear that whistle. You hear a lot more. Yeah. Cool. Well, Caesar, thank you very much. <laughs> We're gonna clean up and thank you, Saul, for an amazing product. This is awesome. First and foremost, huge thanks, huge thanks to Caesar. I would not have done it without him. Having uh, someone there to help you is absolutely crucial. So Caesar, thank you for your help and thank you for being a good friend and, and, and always, always Approach super helpful. Railroad crossing. So thank you, thank you. Also huge shout out to Saul for uh, not only having a great product, but great customer service. Uh, they answered all my questions and concerns. So thank you very much. Well, now listen to this. I know the ECU still has to adapt, so we're going to do a follow-up video. But just listen to this. The windows are open. Turbos. Again, I cannot explain to you 
right now how it how it all works and how it sounds i'm gonna do a follow-up video but inside of the car it definitely sounds louder it's exactly what i've been looking for it's louder but not obnoxiously obnoxiously too loud this is just great <laughs> Woo! all right thanks for watching let me know what you uh think of this setup leave the comments uh below if you have any questions i'll answer every single one of them and uh and i'll see you in the next video bye bye